Okay, we want to find the average rate of change for sine of t over this particular interval. And so basically, because I've graphed it here, so I can see pi over 6 to pi over 2, I want to find the, I'm looking for the slope of the secant line. So if I put a point here and a point here and connected the dots, that's what I'm looking for. When I'm looking for an average rate of change over an interval, okay, then I just use my basic slope formula, which says find the change in my y values over the change in my x values. Okay, well in this case it's going to be my change in h over change in t. I'm just using their values, their variables here. And so I would find the sine of the larger, okay, because remember when we do an interval, I pick the larger one first, pi over 2 minus the sine of pi over 6, and then the change in t, which is pi over 2 minus pi over 6. From here, I would go find a unit circle and figure out what the sine of pi over 2 is, if you don't remember, and the sine of pi over 6. So I have a little unit circle here. So the sine of pi over 2, if you remember, sine is the y value. So if I'm at pi over 2, that's 1. Sine of pi over 6, the y value is 1 half. So the sine of pi over 2 is 1, and pi over 6 is 1 half. I want to be able to subtract these, so I need to get a least common denominator, which would be 6. So I just multiply the top and the bottom by 3 over 3. So I get 3 pi over 6 minus pi over 6. So from here, the top, 1 minus 1 half. So of course, that would be 2 over 2 minus 1 half, common denominator. I get 1 half. On the bottom, 3 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6 would be 2 pi over 6. And you kind of use the little trick where you're flipping things around, meaning this comes down to the bottom and that comes to the top. I tell students, though, go old school and remember why. When you divide fractions, if you remember, you flip the second one and multiply. Okay, so that's what I've done here. And as I can see, the 2 will cancel into this 6 three times. And that gives me my final answer of 3 over 2 pi. Okay, so when you're looking on an interval, this is where you're just simply doing the f of x1 minus f of x0 over x1 minus x0. What we got into today where we did that whole x plus h, remember that's an in instantaneous rate of change at a particular point. So when you're doing an interval, you're using this formula. All right, so hopefully that was helpful and that gives you the slope.